Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I help people that are suffering with adrenal fatigue nightmare. Today I wanted to talk to you about 23andMe results and I want to talk to you about the four variables that you need to understand for you to have any information about 23andMe. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that 23andMe is much more than finding out about your ancestry site. It's not just finding out what descent or European or whatever uh, background you have, but it tells you how well you make energy in your body. And over 250 cellular activities require proper energy production. And you're going to learn when you have a 23andMe results how well your genes code for enzymes, meaning how well do they make enzymes so that these enzymes can help 250 cellular reactivities in the body. So the first thing that we learn about is we get genetic information. That's the first thing, is we understand how our genes are working. There's three possible answers that you can get. You can get a minus minus, you can get a minus plus, and you can get a plus plus. Now, when you get a minus minus, it means that your genes are not altered. You haven't inherited a faulty or altered or inefficient gene from mom or for dad and dad. When it's plus, then it plus minus, then it means it's heterozygous. It means we've inherited one altered gene either from mom or from dad. We don't know who it was unless that particular gene is an X-linked gene, then we know it's from mom. And then plus plus is homozygous, meaning we've inherited an altered gene from mom and from dad. So when we say altered, I hate to use the word mutated because that gives us weird connotations, but altered means it's not efficient. It doesn't work properly. So the best example I use is having a highway. If you had an eight lane highway and you had um, a normal normal, it would be an eight lane highway. If you had a um, altered gene by one parent, heterozygous, now you have a four lane highway. And then if it was homozygous, you would have a two lane highway. So that's one variable. And let's pretend that this is the highway here. You have eight lanes of highway here. Now you may have no altered genes, and I may have altered genes such that I have a two lane or four lane highway, but you may get from point A to point B a lot uh, faster, a lot slower than I can. Now, just because you have a two lane highway and I have an eight lane highway, you may get there before me and I have an eight lane highway. Why is that? Because we have the second variable, which is called cofactors. So in Florida, we have, let's say this highway is a toll highway, and I have one of those transponders, those automatic toll passes that I don't have to stop at every checkpoint. If you don't have that, and I do, then I can get faster to my destination even if I have two lanes and you have four lanes. So what does that mean? That means that I may have more cofactors available even though I have two lanes of genetic problems and you may have no lanes of genetic problems, but you don't have any cofactors. You're eating at McDonald's every day. You don't have magnesium. You don't have zinc. You don't have riboflavin. Your thyroid's not working so great. You may have a problem with your actual cofactors. Number three is inhibitors or things that slow slow traffic down. So let's say um, I have two lanes of highway, I have a major um, problem with cofactors, and then I have a triple whammy. I have a car accident in the middle of the highway. That can really slow down traffic. And that would be uh, things like xenobiotics, heavy metal toxicities, uh, medications like antibiotics and NSAIDs and cholestyramine and um, hormone replacement therapies, mold exposures, leaky gut, TNF-alpha. These are going to be inhibitors. These are going to be major car accidents. So let's follow this through. You may have eight lanes of highway. I may have two lanes of highway. I may get there faster than you because you have no cofactors and you have a major car accident in the middle of the road. The last variable is stress. What does stress have to do with this? Well, stress makes this whole thing work. So let's say we're going from point A to point B and you have two lanes of highway. You can still clear traffic because there's not a lot of cars on the road. 
Cars on the road is the actual stress. Um, if you have the triple whammy, you have a lot of stress, lots of cars on the road. You have genetic predispositions. So you have two lanes of highway instead of eight lanes. You have no cofactor, so you have to stop at every single checkpoint. And you have major car accidents. That's actually not even a triple whammy, that's a quadruple whammy. That's going to really make it very difficult to get to point B. So when you're working with your 23andMe genetic test, you need to keep that in consideration. There's a lot of sites that will tell you, take this pill or take this medication for this gene, take this medication for this gene. It totally misses the point of having no cofactors, having major inhibitors, and having stress. And that's really, really important. And you could even get more specific than, than just what I'm talking about because cofactors need to be made in the body and there's a whole other story to that. Like how well are you making ATP? Are you glycolysis breaking down? Do you have Krebs cycle that's not working well? Do you have maybe oxidation phosphorylation that's breaking down? Do you have maybe the st uh, five stages of mitochondria respiration? Are those complexes breaking down? All of those things can be breaking down. As a result, you're not producing ATP. And as a result of no ATP, you don't have the cofactor to be able to go through these lanes of highway. So um, very, very confusing stuff. But hopefully I gave you some information on genetic testing and 23andMe. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I do free 15-minute phone consults to troubleshoot with you. Um, I help people recover from their adrenal fatigue nightmare. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Your Adrenal Fix. Check out my Facebook site at uh, Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. And lastly, check out my blog at AdrenalFatigueSociety.com. Look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.